Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast, The Road to Restoration. I'm Pastor Sergio Delamore, and I'm so excited that you're joining our podcast community. You know, every time we create a podcast, we're always thinking about people who are on the road to restoration, who perhaps have fallen off the road of restoration, who need to get back on the road to restoration, or maybe people who are just weary of being on the road. Well, today, I wanna talk about something that I think is really important. Something I think all of us can learn from and something that we can share with everyone in our community. I wanna talk about the mental health of men. All of us know someone who has struggled with mental health issues. And perhaps today, you know someone close to you, a man, a father, a grandfather, a boyfriend, a son, someone in your life, maybe a teammate, a coach, maybe your boss, maybe someone who you work with. Men are under attack. And oftentimes we don't hear this. Oftentimes we don't hear how much men struggle in the area of mental health. Well, there's hope. That's the good news. There's hope because we have God. As long as God is in the equation, there's always hope. The Road to Restoration podcast is about doing that very thing, helping people discover the hope that they can find in having a relationship with Christ. Now, because you're on the road to restoration, that means that you're not perfect, but you're on the road to becoming perfected. So there's a story in the Bible that really intrigued me uh, because it talks about a man who was struggling, struggling. He was, in fact, the Bible says he's on the floor, not just physically, but emotionally and in his destiny. It's the story of King David. The Bible picks up the story in 2 Samuel. It says that David is on the floor weeping and crying because of the loss of his son his son that was born to him, and no one knows what to say to the day, to King David. They don't know what to tell him. In fact, they're nervous because he is the king. He's been praying for his son uh, to be resurrected, to come back to life, and to get healed. However, unfortunately, the plan doesn't go as David would like. His son passes away. And so here is a perfect opportunity to study a man, how he gets back up after he's battling with mental health issues. Because you don't have to go far or live long in life to experience painful situations, painful circumstances, situations where you're not in control, situations that apart from a miracle, it's not going to happen. Well, that's where David found himself. Maybe you're there today. You're frustrated. You're angry. You, you're, you're praying, but you're not seeing the answer. You're talking to friends, but it seems like no one can give you the right counsel. And it just seems like you're weary of being on this road. That can happen. And if you're there today, there is hope. Or maybe today you've been praying for something and you're waiting. And unfortunately, you got the bad news that what you were praying for didn't happen. On the road to restoration, there is hope for you. I'm going to read the story to you. The Bible reads this way in 2 Samuel chapter 12. I'll read a good portion of scripture. It says in verse 15, uh, yeah, in verse 19, when David saw them whispering, he realized what had happened. He asked, is the child dead? Yes, they replied, he is dead. Then David got up from the ground, washed himself, anointed himself, changed his clothes, went to the tabernacle and worshiped the Lord. And after that, he returned to the palace and was served food and ate. And the Bible says his advisors were amazed and they said, we don't understand you. Whenever you're going through mental health issues, or remember that most people are not going to understand you. That's what happened in this story. So if we're going to help people or help men who are battling with mental health issues, just remember, whether you're battling yourself or you know someone that is battling, oftentimes we have to be slow to assume that we understand what they're going through. 
The Bible says that his advisor said, we don't understand you. And oftentimes that's the case, isn't it? When you're going through mental health situations and circumstances that are beyond your ability to fathom, to understand, well, you become a person that is hard to understand. And that's what happened with David because his advisors didn't want to say anything to him. And they didn't want to let him know because they were afraid that if they let David know that his child had passed away, that he was going to act, well, outside of character. Well, he acted outside of character, according to them, because as soon as he got the news that his child was dead, he did certain things that I think all of us can learn from. Every man, every wife, every daughter, every business owner, every coach, every person can learn that when a person is battling mental health issues and you want to see their life change, usually they have to go through a process. And I like how David shows us how to get back up when mentally and emotionally you're on the ground. Number one, the Bible says in verse 19, David asked the question, is the child dead? And they said, yes, he is dead. I think that being restored and restoration always begins when we confront reality. And oftentimes this is what happens. We want to live in denial. But what I love about David in this story, he shows us as men how to get back up. The first thing that he asks is, is the child dead? And they said, yes, he is dead. David comes to a place in his heart where he accepts the reality of things. He embraces the cold truth that what he prayed for didn't happen. And the Bible says the very next thing that he does He says, the Bible, well, the Bible says in verse 20, then David got up from the ground. Everyone say, get up, get up. Think about it. They're expecting David to stay on the ground longer. Instead, David gets up as soon as he hears the news. And I think this is a good, well, model for us as men. As hard as our circumstance is, as difficult as the news is that we receive, as painful as the news might be, at some point, if we're going to get back up and be restored, we have to make the decision to get up. Getting up isn't just physical. It's also emotional. It's spiritual. It's mental. David models to us, that if we're going to get back to being the men that we're supposed to be after a tragedy, we have to make the decision to get up. And I think God says the same thing to us. The Bible says a righteous man will fall seven times and get back up. The truth is you could be a righteous man and you could have fallen, but the reality is you've got to get back up. David models to us that as hard as the circumstance happens, If we're going to be restored, we have to make the decision to get up. That means get out of bed. Take the covers off. That means take a shower. Get your hair done. That means go back to the gym. That can mean get back to work. That can mean start having get up and start having conversations. Whatever your get up is, get up and start doing it. Almost because I believe perhaps... Nothing can happen until we make the decision that we want to get up. But look at what the Bible says. Right after the Bible says he gets up, he washes himself. I like that because it's symbolic, right? He takes a shower. And what what is that symbolic of? David doesn't just get up, but he goes and he cleanses himself physically. He takes a shower. Of course, he's been on the ground. We don't know how long. But he does. He takes a shower. So metaphorically speaking, what does that mean? Not only do you have to get up literally, take a shower literally, but sometimes you've got to go through a process of emotional and spiritual cleansing. Consider with me if the cleansing and the shower that we need to take is a spiritual cleansing. To get our mind renewed. To get our heart renewed. To ask God for forgiveness. To forgive 
to go through the spiritual cleansing that is necessary, to let, as the Bible promises in Hebrews, that the blood of Jesus will cleanse us and say better things about us. Maybe today that's what needs to happen. You've gotten up, but have you gone through a process of cleansing your heart, asking God to forgive you, asking God to go into the corridors of your heart, places where no one knows, and have conversations with God that you perhaps have not had. So honest that you're looking around wondering, is anyone else hearing this? Those are the kind of conversations that bring cleansing. And so let me ask you, when was the last time you had a good cleansing? David is a great example on how to get up when you're struggling, when you're having mental health issues. He gets up and the Bible says he cleanses himself. He goes through the process of cleansing, perhaps his memories, his heart, conversations, perhaps asking for forgiveness of others, because that's part of cleansing as well. But then the next thing that he does, no one expected. The Bible says he washed himself, and then it says in one translation, he anointed himself. That means he empowered himself in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, literally, in the Bible, in the text, in those days, he literally went to the table of anointing, took the oil, and placed the oil upon him. Symbolic that he's ready to be empowered again. And he's ready to receive fresh empowerment again. Because to anoint yourself, not only was it a symbol of empowerment, but it was also a symbol of favor. So David not only received and accepted God's favor upon his life again, he also by faith applied that favor on his life again. I like this because it speaks to how we need to constantly remind ourselves that there has been an anointing placed on us because of our relationship with Christ. If you read 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, the Bible says there is an anointing on all of us. And I think there comes a moment in all of our lives as we get restored out of mental health, we've got to choose the anointing of God again. Choose to live an anointed life. Choose to receive the anointing of God. And that means enter back in to a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Letting the Holy Spirit anoint you afresh. Because that's where the anointing happens, doesn't it? It happens when you spend time again with the Holy Spirit in prayer. Spend time in His presence. Get alone. Turn off the phone. And allow you and the Holy Spirit to enter into that relationship, that intimacy, so that His anointing can come upon you again, can empower you again, give you new thoughts, a new perspective, can fill your heart with new courage and boldness. That anointing transforms. The anointing of God restores. And the anointing of God empowers. So David not only gets up, he not only washes himself, but David also makes a decision, I'm going to live an anointed life. I'm going to live a life of a victor, not a victim. I love this about David. This is how men get back up again. This is how you and I are going to get back up again. Maybe you need to share this uh, YouTube um, program with someone. Maybe you need to share this podcast with three or four friends. Maybe with your father. Maybe with a husband. Maybe with the son. Maybe with someone that you love who's been struggling as a man with mental health. David shows us a pattern on how to get back up. He gets up literally. He cleanses himself. He anoints himself. And then look what the scripture says. It says he changes his clothes. This is powerful. Well, of course he's going to change his clothes. I mean, literally speaking, after taking a shower, he puts on a fresh uh, pair of garments. But it also speaks to putting on fresh robe of righteousness. Refreshing our righteousness in Christ. So let me explain this. The Bible tells us that in Christ, we've been given righteousness as a robe. The righteousness of Christ is, has now been placed upon us as we have trusted our heart and life to Christ. He transfers to us his righteousness. His right standing position with the Father continually is now upon your life, upon my life. 
And that is what the grace of God did for us. It transferred the righteousness of Christ to us. So now we're clothed and endowed, not only in the power of the Holy Spirit, anointed, but also endowed in the righteousness of Christ. That speaks to us, renewing our view of ourself. Putting on a new cloth, putting on new clothes and a new garment symbolically means putting on the right identity, a new identity, the righteous identity. In other words, no longer seeing ourselves by what we did, no longer seeing ourselves by what was done, no longer seeing ourselves by what people did to us, but to establish our identity and who Christ sees us as, who the Father sees us as, righteous before him. That's powerful. Because when you have the confidence of righteousness, then you have boldness. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the righteous are as bold as a lion. So we get our boldness back as we take authority over our identity and not letting what was done to us or what we did become who we are, but to clothe ourselves instead with the righteousness of Christ. That might mean that you have to take off the garment of shame. That's right. That might mean you may have to take off the garment of unforgiveness, the garment of pain, the garment of heaviness. Yeah, the garment of failure. Because some of those garments we wear and we like, like all of us have something in the closet that we don't want to get rid of. If I went to your closet, there's always a shirt, a jacket, a hoodie, a sweatshirt, some pants, some sweatpants, some form of clothing that you don't want to get rid of. You're like, no, 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 don't get rid of that. Because we, we've developed a, an, affin an affinity with it, a comfort with that piece of garment. Like, I like wearing this. It makes me feel good when I wear it. Well, what I love about David, he models to us, sometimes you got to take off the old and put on the new. Because the old you can't go where the new you is going. So David models to us that you've got to change your garment. That means put on the garment of praise instead of heaviness. Give God permission to clothe you again by faith. By you taking off perhaps the garments of old. And putting on the garment of righteousness. Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ the story doesn't end. David not only gets up, he not only cleanses himself, he not only anoints himself, he not only changes his garment, but it says he went to the tabernacle and worshiped the Lord. This, I believe, is key and essential. Eventually, we're all going to have to make the decision that we're going to get back to serving God. And that's what David does. He goes back to church, in essence. He goes back to the temple. He goes back to the house of worship where everyone's going to see him. Everyone's going to know what happened, but they also have to see what he's doing. See, oftentimes we don't want to go back to church or we don't want to go back to the community of worship. We don't want to go back into the presence of God with others because perhaps we're concerned about what they know. Well, what they know is what they know. But let's also remind the devil of who you're becoming. That in the midst of it all, you've become a worshiper. And this is what David models. He makes a decision, regardless of what people would say about him, what they're going to think about him, David decides the story's going to end with me worshiping God. How powerful is that? See, when you're struggling with mental health, Oftentimes, the place that you least want to be is around other people. It's true. You want to isolate. You want to just watch service online or just watch YouTube videos. And it's great that you're watching today. I know this video and this podcast is inspiring you. But there comes a moment where we have to not just focus on getting content to inspire us. We have to get around a community that will inspire us. So David makes a decision. I'm going back to church. And he goes to church, not to see what other people are going to think, but to go worship God. He doesn't go to church to see who's going to talk to him. He goes to worship God. He doesn't go to church to see, you know, 
if people are still going to treat him the same, he goes to worship God. And I think in terms of mental health, that's healthy. Because our focus has got to go vertical and not just horizontal. David makes the decision, I'm going to go vertical on everyone. I'm going to worship God. Everything wasn't perfect in his life, but he decided, I'm going to worship God. His prayer didn't get answered, but he decided, I'm going to still worship God. And maybe today, maybe your prayer hasn't been answered. Will you be like David and still go into the tabernacle and worship? I believe that is where the victory is obtained. When we learn to trust God and worship him, even if things didn't turn out the way we thought. That says, I'm healed. Or better yet, I'm being healed. Today, I'm not sure which one of these points touched your heart, but I know this. In this story of David, the Bible says he finishes the story of this chapter of his life by saying, I'm not going to stay on the ground. I'm going to become a worshiper. And today, I'm going to believe the same for you. If we're going to help the men in our life, these are thoughts, these are stages, this is a pattern on how we can help men get restored. Strong men create strong families. Strong families create a strong society. One of the best ways we can help our society is by having strong families. One of the ways that we can have strong families is by helping the men in our families get stronger. Today, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you, and I want to pray with every man that is watching this podcast because I believe in you, God believes in you, and I know God wants you to be restored. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man that is listening to this podcast, watching the podcast, and I ask you right now, Holy Spirit, that you will minister to the parts of their heart where perhaps they've not exposed to anyone. You know those areas of their heart. Whether it's shame, guilt, anger, pride, brokenness, hurt, unforgiveness. Holy Spirit, anoint that area. Anoint it with the joy of gladness, with healing ointment. Cause their heart to be turned back to you. Cause them to rise up like David. Cause them to become the men that they need to be for the people who love them so much. And I thank you, Father, that even now, this podcast, God, you're using it to capture their heart and turn it back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed this podcast, I'm going to ask you, of course, like, share, put a comment. But most importantly, pray about who you need to forward this to. There's probably three or four people that you're thinking about needed to hear this podcast. I know if you help them, sometimes you might even be helping yourself. I know this, you'll be helping another son of God get healed. Well, thanks for listening to the podcast, The Road to Restoration. I'm Pastor Sergio Delamora. And again, thanks for being part of our community. And thanks for sharing this with your friends. God bless you. Thank you.